So we have done with this chart, okay? And now our third topic is the receptive field. So what is a receptive field? It is an area of the body that when it's stimulated, okay, when you have stimulated it, it changes the, now here comes the important concepts. Okay, now here comes the action potential. I will explain you, just read it. Let, let me read it first and then I'll take you to the action potential. Otherwise you will not understand receptive field and sensory construction, okay? So it is an area of the body that when stimul stimulated changes the firing rate of a sensory neuron. If the firing rate of the sensory neuron is increased, the receptive field is excitatory. So the more the firing rate the more excitation, that means the more depolarization, okay? And if the firing rate of the sensory neuron is decreased, the receptive field becomes inhibitory, or I can say it repolarization. So excitation is depolarization and inhibition is repolarization, okay? Repolarization or hyperpolarization, okay? So uh, now we have to grab the concept of, of action potential. I, I will... Hmm. Let me Okay, now here is there is a whiteboard. Let me draw the action potential for you people. Okay. So first so now, like, first of all, you need to know some basic things regarding the action potential. So I may kind of... Okay, you, you can make your own chart to remember these basic MCQs, okay? So uh, this here is take this as or, or, or i may i may draw another line here make three columns okay so you may remember it's real better okay now here i will i will write the event that is hap happening okay the event that is happening for example, we are talking about the resting membrane potential. Okay, and then I will explain you what are these. Okay, so we have three events that take place. One of them is the resting membrane potential. Okay, the second one is the firing level. You just read the word firing rate. Okay, so there is a firing level. It is very hard to write on a keyboard, but like my screen is not touch screen so it's hard to write on a laptop so rmp resting membrane potential firing level and then the end of depolarization so these are your uh, three events that will happen so you can kind of write i will not write the complete spelling but i'm just writing depolarized okay depolarization Okay, so these are the three events that are taking place. Now, I will tell you at the level of nerve fiber, okay, and I will tell you at the level of skeletal muscle fiber, okay? What is a firing level? Yes, I will explain the firing level. Please wait and hold on a second. So, I will I will tell you first of all you have to know the the voltage okay the voltage at at which these events takes place and then when you will know then we will draw the action potential of a nerve fiber and then I will tell you what is a firing level okay and so the nerve at in the nerve fiber the resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolts okay now this is millivolts all of them will be of millivolt, okay? But in a skeletal muscle fiber, it takes place at minus 90 millivolt. So remember, remember these things. These are like free marks. These are free marks of your MCQs. Students make mistakes even in this. 
These are free marks. You have to just learn it. So resting membrane potential of nerve fiber is minus 70 and skeletal muscle is minus 90. Then the firing occurs at minus 55 millivolt. Okay. You just have to add 15 in it. Just add 15 to 55 and you will reach the RMP or I may say uh, or I may say that minus subtract subtract 15 from it and you will reach the firing level. Okay, so like uh, minus one is is smaller and minus 70 is like bigger. So, you know, you, you go it like this, you go it like this, this is zero and then this is minus one, minus two, and then this is plus one, plus two. So, so when, when you go to minus 55, you will reach minus 55 early and you will reach minus 70 later. Okay, so, so take it like that, okay? And I will explain you uh, the action when I when I'll draw the action potential. You will actually understand, like not now. Then, if I talk about the skeletal muscle fiber, the firing level, you again have to subtract minus fifteen. Okay, so what it will become? It will become minus seventy-five. So now it's easy. Okay, and there is a point where the depolarization has to end. The depolarization has to end and repolarization has to begin. So that particular level, that point is called end of depolarization. And this is plus 35 millivolt. Okay, plus 35 millivolt. And in the case of skeletal muscle fiber, it is plus 55 millivolt. Okay, so you have to, you have to, now, now I am not telling you to add or subtract anything because you are going from minus 55 way above zero and then from zero you are reaching plus 35. So there, there are, there are like so many numbers. I'm not doing that math for you and I will not want you to remember uh, minus or plus something in it okay but if you can uh, if you want to remember it in an easy way you can forget this minus and plus okay you can like remember because these things are totally rata okay so you have to like remember it like 55 and 35 so you are going uh, to you're you're going 20 down okay same here from 75 to 55 you're going 20 down Okay, so like you can remember that, but you, but do not forget the minus and plus, please. That will, otherwise you will lose your free marks, actually. These things do not have any concept. These are just numbers and you have to remember the numbers. Okay, so let me rub it and I will, so now you're, uh, do you understand this thing? Like you can even take a screenshot of it. Now let's 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 make the action potential. Okay. So let's make the action potential, and and I will I I am like should I remove it, people, because I want space. Uh, should can I rub it? If you want to save it, please take a screenshot of it. I am like rubbing it now. Okay, I am rubbing this 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 diagram, this 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 box. Okay. So you can also like listen it on your recording once again. You can take this lecture once again. Okay. Okay. Now, let, let, let's come to the, 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 the real action potential. Very, very interesting thing. Now, I am 
making these two axes okay these are the two axes and okay first of all now this for example this is zero I've drawn it a little above because we have minus more than, than plus, okay? So this is zero, okay? And so I'll, I'll draw this, 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 this line over here. Let's say, okay? So this is zero. And I'll go below it like, minus 20 and minus 40 and I'll go to minus 60 and I'll go minus okay I am I, I, I I'm drawing minus uh, minus 72 okay so so that you may you may know I'm drawing minus 70 okay and then I'm drawing minus 80 and then further on like minus 90 I, I'm like now I'm drawing minus 95 okay so but basically we are learning nerve fiber uh, action potential okay now when we go above zero plus 20 and then plus 40 okay so here uh, here we will have here we will have plus 35 okay so here we will have plus 35 so you have to remember this plus 35 and then also i want to I want to write this this with blue color uh, with, with this blue minus 70 okay it's level minus 70 and then here there will be a level which will be minus 55 okay so now now you remember that thing which I told you minus 70 is the RMP resting membrane potential okay and thus minus 55 is the firing level. So I will write FL, okay? And then this plus 35 is the end of the polarization. So I am writing A ED in short, okay? So let's, let's now, let's now um, understand the mechanism. What happens is you get a slight stimulus. You get a slight stimulus for say little, 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 little stimulus and then you reach minus 70 okay but then you get a bit of more stimulus you're you're just having more stimulus and you reach minus 55 so the period from the period from here to here the period from here to here, this period, okay, is, is what we call latent period. Oh, I am, I'm using yellow color to write, so let me use my blue color. Okay, so this is, this period is called latent period, okay, in which you are going from your, the, the, the stimulus is just started, okay, and, and you've reached minus 50. So at this level, I'm doing this so that you may get the most of what is happening in an action potential. So let's say this is minus 79. Okay, let's say this is minus 79. From minus 79 to minus 70, you re you are you're reaching. Okay, so that is not a part of your action potential. Okay, because below that you're it's just a none or all law 
that we called a none or all law what is what is none or all law that either you will uh, the either the, st the intensity of that stimulus okay will will have to like increase gradually to reach up the resting membrane potential and to the firing level to to cause a depolarization so up till now we have not reached depolarization we uh, i have not drawn depolarization uh, uh, yet okay we are just we are just uh, producing signals for depolarization we are reaching that that current level okay which is minus 55 so you are getting these little signals little, little little stimulus that will gradually increase every time another stimulus is added so these stimuli these stimulus are like added if you if you add in, in in one action potential you have one stimulus okay nerve fiber always generate one action potential at one time but you can have multiple stimuluses to generate one action potential keep this uh, concept very clear nerve fiber only generate one one action potential at one time only one at one time the other will begin when you will when you will reach to this our uh, resting membrane potential then you will generate another one okay but you can have multiple stimuluses to generate one action potential so one uh, one stimulus plus one stimulus plus one stimulus so that is how you reach this level of rmp and then this process goes on till you reach the firing level so firing level is basically your threshold okay are you clear uh, who asked me the question what is a firing level firing level is basically your threshold point okay so now you will never forget the difference between an RMP and a threshold. So this process of adding one stimulus, one stimulus, one stimulus is called summation. Okay, summation. So these terminologies are important. This, this is called summation, okay? So just remember, now we are going from the firing level to the uh, depolarization, okay? So I'll take some other color. Let's take a room. Now you reached minus 55, the threshold level, and here, the sodium channels are open. The sodium channels are opened. There is an influx, an influx of sodium, okay? Positive charges are entering into your cell, okay? Your cell, your cell body of, of a neuron because neuron also have, you know, cell soma, and axon and dendrites. So, so the positive charges are entering more and more, more and more. And here you're having this shoot depolarization fast depolarization and you will only reach up to this level which is minus 35 you can't go beyond that level that's the rule that's the rule you can't go beyond that level when you reach plus 35 it will end the sodium channels will close and then what will happen, potassium will open. Okay, now, now students do confuse that sodium, sodium and potassium both have these plus charges. Okay, so both of them should be responsible for depolarization. But no, this is not the case. And why it is not? Because sodium and potassium are not present in one, uh, one if, you, if you remember from chemistry, we have this periodic table. So, so they are not present in one group. 
okay so they are present in one group but they are not present in one period okay the, the the vertical ones are the group and the longitudinal horizontal ones are the period so they they are they are present one after the other so there is a massive difference in between their structures in their structures there is a there is a, a huge difference in their structures so that is why um sodium is more positive than potassium okay so when the potassium channels will open the the current will drop the current will drop till it reaches the threshold okay till it reaches the threshold now here two mechanisms occur at this particular level two things will occur if if the nerve fiber get a stimulus back again okay another action potential will be generated but if it does not get the uh it does not get the stimulus it will go down to the resting membrane potential and there it will wait till the next action potential so if the next if 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 there if there will be another another threshold okay another another stimulus there you know all these summations will occur so then another firing will take place okay and same either it will reach here or it will come down here or it will come down even more lower so this stage now this is stage now where you are going even more low even more low is called hyperpolarization okay this is called hyperpolarization what happens is the potassium channels are opened okay and lots of potassium is coming inside and due to some problem okay some pathology they are not being closed so the potassium is like rushing in and your current is going down or in down so that is called what we call hyperpolarization okay and then we have to another concept uh, which are refractory period one is absolute refractory period okay and the other one is is relative refractory period okay so what is the difference between absolute refractory period and relative refractory period uh let me let me clear this side okay so that i may i, I can write here are you people clear with the action potential is there any question is there any question should i continue okay so let's come to the uh, absolute and the relative refractory periods so people you have to remember this 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 these values okay these values are important and for the skeletal muscle fibers also so if uh, if we will be talking about the skeletal muscle we have we have begin our journey with minus 95 okay with minus 95 and we have reached to minus 75 for the threshold and uh, from the threshold uh, we we should have gone like uh, up to minus plus 55 okay so so plus 55 for the uh, end of depolarization so the uh, the minus 50 70 okay uh, so so the from the threshold to the end of depolarization in skeletal muscles it is longer is longer than the nerve fiber okay but that's not that's not important so you have to remember the values more now uh, now the refractory period okay 
um, one more thing you need to remember that this zero is what we call isoelectric point. Okay, so like there is why this is called isoelectric because there is no deflection. If if for say for example this is a galvanometer and this is your zero and this is minus and this is plus. So when your needle is at zero, it means there is no current over here. So isoelectric point. When you get more current, go to plus. Okay, and when you will have uh, and when you will have uh, a negative deflection, that means you're having low current. Okay, so zero is your isoelectric point. Remember this thing, this terminology, zero millivolt is an isoelectric point. Okay. Now, let's study the ARP and the RRP. So from here, no. I'm just trying to, okay. From here to here, this part, okay, if I, if I can like, if I can like change the color of it. From here to here, this part, and then from here, to here, okay, this part. This is your, are we going from, have I draw, drawn it from like minus 55? No, it's, wait, 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 I made a mistake. I have to draw it from, because this diagram is so messy. From here to here, and from here. To here. Okay. Now what I've done. I have divided this picture into two. From your resting membrane potential to your end of depolarization. From your resting membrane potential to your end of depolarization, that is the point where you get the stimulus to you reach plus 35 voltage, okay? From here to here, this is your absolute refractory period. Okay, now let me tell you what. If it in words I say, you cannot generate a second action potential. Okay, there is no, uh, there is there is no capacity to generate a second action potential when you are in this green region. You are in this green region, and you even you get a very strong. Even you are getting a very strong stimulus again from, 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 from this minus 70, you are getting another signal, very strong signal, but you can generate another action potential. This is an absolute refractory period, okay? But when you are in here, in this, in this purple color part, you can generate another action potential. You can generate another action potential in this region, but there is an exception. And the exception is nerve fiber itself. You can do this work when you are dealing with skeletal muscle, but you can't do this work when you are dealing with a nerve fiber. Nerve fiber, one action potential at one time. An action potential comprises of depolarization and repolarization together, okay? You, are, you have not reached the repolarization portion, you are stuck here. So 
until it's completed, you can begin another. But when you are in a skeletal nerve, uh, skeletal muscle, and you're you're conducting a action potential, you reached this level, you can generate another if a strong stimulus is there. So you should know that absolute refractory period. In absolute refractory period, there is no second action potential generation in spite of a very strong stimulus. Okay, and it happens when there is depolarization going on. It occurs during depolarization phase when your sodium channels are activated. This absolute one, but the relative refractory period, okay, occurs when there is this repolarization phase. This, this, when there is this repolarization phase, okay? Repolarization phase is going on when your sodium channels are inactivated and your potassium channels are activated, okay? You can generate a second action potential if a strong, second strong stimulus is there. So are you people clear? with the, the absolute and the relative refractory period. Then there is another concept, which is called sub-threshold potential, uh, which is a local response. So I want to touch that part also. So if you're, if, if you, if you're clear till here, we shall move further, uh, further and, and I will, I will, I, I thought that I will take my lecture to the, uh, to the cerebral cortex portion, but we are like just ending our another 40 minutes. So I want to complete action potential today. Even if this lecture ends, I will join again and I want to complete this action potential again. So, uh, so are you, please respond me. Are you clear till this point people? Okay, very good. Now we have another concept. I will like clear some, some, some stuff. Okay, I will clear some stuff. This is so messy. Okay. So we are back up here. Okay. Now I, I, I wanna I wanna talk about uh, regarding the sub threshold potential. Now the sub threshold potential is I am talking about this portion. Okay, I'm talking about this portion, like below the threshold I'm talking about. So when I'm talking about below the threshold, this, this, uh, the stimulus, this stimulus, which we got is also called sub minimal stimulus. Okay. You will see these words in your textbooks, sub minimal stimulus. So you should know what a sub minimal stimulus is. It is a sub threshold potential. Okay. It, 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 this, this changes when you reach the threshold, it, it, it turns into a depolarization or an excitable state. So, at this particular level, your your impulse can die because it has not reached the firing level, okay? So when your stimulus, your current has not reached, has not reached this firing level, the response can die. So you should remember what is a sub-threshold potential. Let's say, for example, we are having this, 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 and we are not able to reach this level Okay, we reach this level, action potential is fired. But let's say we reached up till here. We reached up till minus 60. Okay, we reached up till minus 60, not minus 55. So depolarization will not occur. This response will die. This is called 
sub threshold potential or sub minimal stimulus so this is a terminology okay so you have to remember this terminology now we are done with our um, we are done with our nerve action potential and i guess you have like kind of understood it so when we will be like uh, done with our neurophysiology i will teach you the action potentials of when we will be studying cardiac physiology the action potential of cardiac physiology is completely different so that is why i skipped first chapter uh, cell physiology because it was all based on these uh, ions and the receptors and the and the uh, action potentials of different but 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 it's better to study when we are studying that particular part okay so okay now in a, the, there is one concept which i want to clear all times and there is one concept which i want to share with you people before ending our today's lecture we are left with a few minutes and that is adaptation okay that is adaptation so that tomorrow we can begin our sensory pathways so what is adaptation i will tell you in like uh, easier words what and what adaptation means okay i told you that you got a you you're you're getting the uh, impulse signal okay so when your nerve fiber is continuously stimulating okay so that excitation that that stimulation is greater in the beginning okay but later on when we goes the response of that firing decreases so when the response of that firing decreases the nerve fiber does not show any response at all this process this phenomenon i'm telling you is called adaptation now let's read this okay adaptation of sensory receptors slowly adapting or tonic receptors respond repetitively to a prolonged stimulus and detect a steady stimulus steady means that's going on okay that's going on that's continuous but when we talk about rapidly adapting okay it shows a decline in action potential frequency with time in response to a constant stimulus when you are constantly getting uh, uh, getting stimulus there is a time there is there is a time limit it's not like you you are you're giving a stimulus till one hour no no there is a time limit applied so cons in in the case of constant stimulus the the response